Welcome to another session of On Track Parenting. Okay, let me paint a picture for you. It's a beautiful spring afternoon and you're out for the drive. The weather is perfect, the windows are down and the music's up and life is good. And then all of a sudden you hit a pothole. Not a tiny little dip, but a good size hole in the street that you should have seen coming, but you didn't. Your smooth, sunny ride just got bumpy. Well, as parents, you are on a journey and the road of parenting is full of potholes. Some big, some small, and all of them make the ride a whole lot bumpier for you and your children. As parents, I've learned that potholes are unavoidable. Some hot potholes are universal, potholes that virtually every parent will encounter. I've also learned that some potholes are self-inflicted, bumps along the road that, as we, that we as parents introduce to the journey. And I've learned that some potholes are put in place by our own children, sometimes unintentionally, and sometimes it seems like they took out the shovel themselves and dug the hole themselves, just hoping we'd all fall in as a family. The list of potential potholes is long. There are potholes when you're raising young children that are different than the potholes that arise when your children are in elementary school. And it could seem like by the time our kids enter their teenage years, potholes are the rule and not the exception. When I held my daughter Shania at the hospital for the very first time, I imagined the road ahead would look something like this. Smooth, peaceful, full of tranquility, but I quickly realized it looks something more like this. You need to know that you will hit some potholes on the road of parenting, but what are they and how do we avoid them? Again, the list of potholes is long and there's no way we can address all of them in this session. So instead of working on ways, uh, our way through pos uh, every possible pothole you will encounter as a parent, we're going to highlight two. Yep, only two, because the vast majority of other potholes you will encounter can either be eliminated completely or at least navigated much more successfully if you are aware of the two biggies. So here are the two biggest potholes you may face as a parent. I say potential and I say may face intentionally because these are potholes that you can avoid. Remember earlier I mentioned that some potholes are self Inflected, inflicted. The two potholes we're going to address in the next two sessions are potholes you can avoid. But first, you need to know what they are. We will look at the first pothole in this session, and then the second pothole we'll cover in the following session. So let's get down to it. The first pothole is being disconnected from your children. Potholes happen when parents find themselves disconnected from their children. At the Gospels, we can see a literal example of this with Jesus when he was a child. He was on a trip with his family from some, and, and somehow managed to get physically disconnected from them. For three whole days, his mom and dad suddenly realized Jesus was not with them. It was that, oh, hey, I thought it was with you. I thought he was with you routine. I mean, how disconnected do you have to be to not notice your preteen was missing for three whole days? Now, to clarify, I'm not suggesting you be connected at the hip with your kids. Different seasons and phases of parenting require different levels of connectedness. And we'll take a look at those seasons and phases in a later session. But the idea of being connected, especially emotionally and relationally, with your child, regardless of their age, or even their physical proximity is one of the best ways to avoid so many of the potential potholes in the road. But staying connected to our kids is tough work. Life is busy, calendars are full. It's, it's tough enough to find time to eat a meal together, together let alone stay emotionally and, and relationally connected in a meaningful way. But I can't let you off the hook here. Signing up to be a parent means signing up to sacrifice and prioritize your children over your comfort. It means signing up to set some of your other interests and responsibilities on the back burner for the sake of your kids. What it doesn't mean is your world needs to revolve around your children. 
but it does mean that your children should be the most important thing in your world. So how do you stay connected to your kids? What does connectivity look like as our children grow? Well, it's a lifelong journey for all of us. And it will look different in each family and with each kid. But I think there are some commonalities worth considering. So let me work through these very quickly. Here are some thoughts on how to connect with your kids. The first thing, uh, first thought is clean the slate. And cleaning the slate isn't this one-time deal. You will need to clean the slate over and over and over again. And then a few more times over the course of your parenting journey. You'll need to clean their slate because they're gonna mess up, they'll fall short, they'll disappoint, they'll even disobey. And those things have a tendency when they do that to build frustration. And when frustrations fester, our connectedness with our kids suffer. And you'll need to clean your slate a lot. <laughs> You'll need to clean your slate of some of the expect expectations you have. You'll need to clean the slate of some of the mistakes you have or, and will make. You have to clean the slate of some of the guilt you carry from not getting things right in the past. A slate full of mistakes, missteps, and mess ups that you, that you regularly remind yourself of hurts your ability to connect with your children. The next one. Open your eyes to their world. Okay, let's pretend you're a 25 year old parent of a two year old. Your world looks a whole lot different than theirs. And I imagine your interests do too. Fast forward 10 years, you're 35 and, you're, and your child is 12 and about to enter their teenage years. You are in the prime years of building your career and your child is going through pu puberty. Not a lot in common, right? Fast forward another decade and now you're 45, feeling the midlife crunch and your child is 22, about to jump into life with both feet. Along the way, it's easy to feel disconnected because your world and their world seem to have very little in common. And because of that, a fantastic way to connect with them is to purposely pay attention to what's important and engaging to them. Open your eyes to the stuff they are setting their eyes on. When a dad gets, the, gets on the ground to build Legos with his daughter, that's a connection point. When a mom agrees to play a, a few video games with her preteen son, that's a connection point. When parents take time to engage their 19-year-old's -year 19 year -old's world at any level, that's a connection point. But here's the tough part. Sometimes opening your eyes to their world means you have to be willing to briefly turn a blind eye to your own world. It may mean not watching Monday night football because Monday nights happen to be the night the, the local father-son Rubik's Cube Club meets and your son's been begging you to go. Or maybe mom, it means you buying your own softball glove because your daughter has fallen in love with the sport and you don't know nothing about it. Opening your eyes to their world and taking an interest and the things that interest them instead of expecting them to be interested in the things that interest you is perhaps the most important sacrifice you can make in an effort to connect with your kids, whatever their age may be. Here's another way to connect. Notice their progress. This is a big one. Sadly, the world is littered with adults who grew up feeling disconnected from their parents for a common reason. They felt like it was impossible to please mom or dad, that nothing they did was good enough. They grew up in a home where one or both parents scrutinized and criticized their every move. Few things will disconnect a child from their parent in as devastating a manner with as long lasting effect as parents who focus on the negative instead of noticing and celebrating the efforts and progress of their children. Here's two practical examples of what I mean by noticing their progress. Let's say you have a 12 year old son and he's responsible for taking out the trash each week. And each week he forgets. He never manages to take the trash out without a reminder from mom or dad. He not only needs a reminder, but he reacts as if reminding him to do a chore that every child in history has had is the equivalent to breaking child labor laws. 
It's the same routine every single week, except one week, for some unknown reason, the stars align and your son remembers to take the trash out on his own and has some somewhat decent attitude even in the process. You certainly notice this progress and you probably will be tempted to respond in one or two ways. Option one, you can mumble under your breath just loud enough for him to hear, well, it's about time you got your age and earn your keep around here. Or option two, you can wait a couple of hours until the evening kind of winds down. You slip into his room and you say, hey, can we talk for a second? Sit on the edge of his bed and just say, hey, I just want to let you know that I noticed you took the trash out tonight. I didn't even have to ask. I know it's an easy chore to forget, but thanks for doing that. Good job. Or how about this? Your five-year-old daughter is struggling to control her temper. She's the fireball of the family. And her first response when hurt, frustrated, or angry is to lash out, sometimes verbally and sometimes physically. But lately, she seems to pause for a second or two before lashing out. And her response are a little more tame than usual. Make sure she knows that you are noticing the progress. Even baby steps are worth celebrating. It's so easy to focus on the negative. I mean, our kids are bonkers and they're gonna do more negative than good. They're learning, they're growing. But experience has taught me that noticing and celebrating the progress of our children, regardless of how small it may be, is a fantastic way to stay connected and avoid some of the painful potholes. Moving on to the next. Neglect the small stuff. Nobody likes to be nitpicked. I once heard a parenting expert say, neglect the small stuff, and it's almost all small stuff. Here's some examples that might be considered small stuff. A clean room. Is a clean room worth the frustration and disruption in your relationship it takes to actually achieve the clean room? An occasional C on the report card. How damaging is it to the future aspirations of a fourth grader to get a C in math? Listen, perhaps you can't neglect these things completely. After all, discipline and doing our best are important virtues to instill in our children. But maybe you can neglect the urge to blow them out of proportion. Maybe you can look the other way when your son's room is a mess and celebrate, celebrate the fact that he took the trash out. Not everything needs to be a big thing. Consider saving your expressions of disappointment and frustration for the things that really matter, like when your fourth grade daughter comes home with a neck tattoo. Okay, let's move on to the next. Express your love through their language. A great way to connect with your children is to know their love language and express your love in a way that they best receive it. Does your child value time spent together? Do they re like receiving gifts? Are words of affirmation most meaningful? Do they value acts of service or physical touch? Now, to clarify, all five of these things are really important for your children to receive from you. But as your children get older, you will begin to notice that they respond to one or two of these categories more than the rest. Lean into that. If your son loves gifts, express your love through gifts. If your daughter loves spending time together, then the most important gift you can give her is the gift of your time. When you express your love to your children in their love language, you will connect on a deeper and more meaningful level. The next one, create memories. Years ago, a Christian organization researched thousands of families and found that shared memories were a common theme in virtually every healthy family system. The time mom's minivan got three flat tires and a three mile stretch, or the traditional uh, decorating Christmas cookies together competition, or when it snowed during the spring break camping trip. Lots of memories are created for better and for worse during the normal routines of life 
And you can also ensure that memories are forged by creating some family rituals, traditions, and routines. Create memories. And finally, last but not least, talk with your children. And notice I said talk with, not talk to or talk at. You need to know that talking with your child is a back and forth thing. It's not lecturing, it's not admonishing, it's talking with your child. And talking with your child usually means you're gonna listen more than you talk. It means asking open-ended questions and prodding them along as they reply. Talking with your child means paying attention to their unique window of conversation. And here's what I mean by that. Some children like to talk during the car ride home from school, and some like to use that time for a nap. You have some children that like to talk during the bedtime routine, and some kids fall asleep before the routine is even over. You have some children who open up at the breakfast table, and others open up while working on a project with mom and dad. Everybody, adults and children alike, all have unique windows of conversation, times that are more, they are more open to the idea of opening up than others. But here's something you need to do, and remember. Avoid the temptation to force conversation when your window of conversation is open, and instead capitalize on when their window is open. Like I mentioned at the top of this session, parenting is full of potholes, some fairly insignificant and some massive, some with minimal consequences and some that cause great harm. And you will hit some potholes on your parenting journey. It's impossible to avoid them all. And one of the larger potholes is being disconnected from your child. A child who consistently feels a sense of distance from mom and her dad is at greater risk. Staying connected to your kids and them feeling connected to you isn't easy. And it's gonna get harder as they continue to grow. But I want you to know that it's worth the work. And so I hope that this session has provided you with a few ideas that's gonna help you connect with your kids better along your journey. In the next session, we'll take a look at the second big pothole of parenting. But before watching that, make sure that you check out the discussion and reflection exercises for this session.